Hello and welcome to my special episode all about my first Rhinebeck experience. Um, my name on Instagram is Orchis Heart and I am a knitter, sewer, creative person based in Birmingham in England and I've just come back from a big holiday in America. Um, so I have never been to Rhinebeck before so I'm going to share a bit about that in this video who I saw, what I saw, and also what I did get whilst I was there. So there is going to be a little bit of an acquisition, acquisition section, um, but not that big because oh, I'm not a big shopper. I already have lots of beautiful yarn, um, but I did get a few treats. So I just wanted to share those um, because they're all pretty much all new to me yarns, um, all yarns I would not be able to get here in England. So very exciting um, and I've got plans, all of them already, so I can share those plans as well. Um, but yes, so you might be able to hear that my voice is not quite how it normally is. Um, if you have watched or listened to me before, maybe you can't tell, maybe the cold has worn off enough, worn off enough now that I sound almost normal, I'm not sure. I feel like I still sound a bit croaky. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to talk so much about the rest of my holiday um, in this video because I might share a bit about that in another episode because we just took a our big holiday of the year, um, probably the last for a long time if I'm honest, and um, we took a two week holiday to the States. I have some family over there in Philadelphia so we went to go visit them for a couple of days and then um, drove up to conveniently not so far away to upstate New York for Rhinebeck which was about a three and a half hour drive we did stay somewhere locally well about an hour away the night before to break it up a bit um, but yes I did book my family trip holiday uh conveniently within the same week as Rhinebeck as I could go. We did go to America last year and I probably missed Rhinebeck by about two weeks which I was a bit gutted about but it was quite a big deal that trip so I didn't want to co-opt it with my own agenda <laughs> because other people were affected whereas this time it was just my partner and I that went um and so I could be a little bit more dictating what we got up to. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if my camera's actually upside down. I don't think so. Hopefully the angle's okay. Um, I have it round the wrong way because that's the better cameras on the back so I can't see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm not messing with the microphone today or the new camera settings because I have been feeling jet lagged and a bit under the weather since I got back. Um, I have only been back a couple of days and honestly I don't have the energy to mess with new tech. Um, maybe I'll worry about that in the next one. I don't know. Um, um, so yes, this video I'm going to share a bit about Rhinebeck, um, some clips I recorded whilst I was there and then a bit about what I got whilst I was there and what I intend to make with those things. Sorry, I'm seeing if I'm going to sneeze again. I don't think I am. I'm drinking my first cup of Earl Grey tea since I got back um, which I'm very much enjoying I didn't take any Earl Grey tea with me and I actually opened a new packet when I got back because it tastes amazing so I'm really really enjoying it I've shared before but I buy all my Earl Grey tea from a market in Bath called Gilliard's Gillard's I think Gillard's well that doesn't sound very British to me maybe it is Gilliard I'm not sure um and the tea is like the best Earl Grey tea I've ever encountered. In fact, I've kind of gotten to the point where I refuse to drink Earl Grey tea from anywhere else because even the posh Earl Grey tea bags that you can buy don't really taste like Earl Grey tea. It tastes like fake bergamot or the bergamot taste isn't very strong. I might just, no. This is really good and not that expensive actually. Not for good tea and they do ship internationally because I did ship some to France when I was living there. So I do recommend. Anyway, so I went to Rhinebeck. Um, by that I mean I went to the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. So Rhinebeck's the name of the town. Um, I forgot to say, if you're sick to death of Rhinebeck videos at this point and people's catch-ups about it, like I'm not offended if you don't watch this, skip it. 
or if you want to skip just forward to see what I got whilst I was there, feel free. Um, I know there's been quite a few summaries of Rhinebeck already, um, but I've never been before. I'm probably never going to go again because it's too far away from me, from Birmingham to New York is quite far. Um, and I'm not sure that we're going to be taking any big trips to America in the foreseeable future because we've got some, we're hopefully moving house and by that there'll be a lot of DIY needed because where we're hoping to move to, which we haven't bought yet by the way, so I'm being super hopeful, um, is a bit of a wreck and will need a lot of work there for a lot of time and money. So I don't think we'll be taking any big holidays for a long time if that does happen. Um, so yes, so this will be my only Rhinebeck visit, I think. Uh, so I wanted to share. So anyway, going back to that, so not offended if you don't want to watch this one, I'll see you in the next one. Um, so yes, we went to Rhinebeck, we flew to America a couple of days before Rhinebeck, spent some time with family, drove up to upstate New York, stayed in a very strange motel. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm a fan of motels. I don't think I like having the front door, like just out to where the cars are. I feel very vulnerable, I'm not used to it. We stayed in another motel, another part of the trip, and somebody knocked on the door and I was terrified. <laughs> and we answered the door with the chain and they asked like, is, I don't know, so-and-so there? And I'm like, no. If I'm looking for so-and-so, I was like, I can't help you. I don't know who that person is. <laughs> can't you tell that we're foreign? <laughs> um, yeah, so no, motels are not for me. So we stayed in a kind of weird motel and I have to admit by that point, it really wasn't very well. <laughs> um, probably it was around the worst point of my illness and I was really worried about my ability to get through Rhinebeck because I knew it would be busy. Um, so Rhinebeck is the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. I did not go to Woolen Folk, Indian Tangled or any of the other festivals that were on before or after Rhinebeck, New York State Sheep and Wool. Um, so I'm calling it Rhinebeck because Rhinebeck is the name of the town that the festival happens in and so everybody just calls it Rhinebeck. Um, but there's now lots of other festivals happening in the Rhinebeck area around that and I have heard a lot about uh, Woolen Folk and about how awful it was this year. I have to admit that I was really gutted I couldn't go but um, you know we only had three days of family time and it seemed to me that it was more important to spend time with family than going to two yarn festivals and it was New York Sheep and Wool that I really wanted to go to. So I'm so, so, so glad that I didn't waste the time and money going to Woolen Folk, because I think it was $40 a ticket, and I would have to have bought two, one for me and one for my partner, and he's not even interested. So, I mean, that's a lot of yarn, $80. That was a huge chunk of my budget that I used for buying yarn at Rhinebeck which comparatively was about $13 to get in. So I didn't feel so bad by my partner a ticket when he really had no interest whatsoever. Um, but yeah, so I'm not gonna talk about Wooden Folk because it does sound like it was a bit of a SHIT show. <laughs> and um, I have no authority to speak about it. It just does strike me as really sad um for, for the vendors involved and you know my heart does go out to people who've had their livelihoods threatened um and all from a badly organized event but it's not my place to talk about that so i'm, I'm not going to get into it um but what in fact no ryan beck new york state sheep and wool i did kind of anticipate it was going to be really busy and it was really busy <laughs> It was a bit too busy for me, although not on the scale it sounds of Woolen Folk, although that might be more of a space issue. Um, I found it quite overwhelming, if I'm honest. I, It was really exciting seeing all the yarn that I don't get to see. It was really exciting to meet some people that I speak to on Instagram, but have never met in real life and may never meet again. Um, but I'm not entirely sure if I enjoyed it or not. And that's a terrible thing to say. I mean, the actual festival itself. I think I do kind of understand now why people go for two days. Before I went, and I heard that like most people were going for both days, Saturday and Sunday, I, I kind of thought, like, I don't understand why, because it's the same thing for two days. <laughs> um, so why would you go twice? Um, 
And again, like we were on holiday, I didn't want to subject my partner to two days. So we agreed we would just do one. Um, and like, I don't think he'd have the patience or capacity to deal with two days of it anyway. Um, I also now think that going with your partner isn't necessarily, unless they're interested, of course, isn't necessarily the best way. I think I'd get a lot more from it if I went with other fibre friends, which is very tricky when I'm here. <laughs> um but that's just my thoughts um it was a great experience i'm really glad i went but it was it, for me it was too much in one go um there was too many options i found that a bit stressful um and it was at points kind of difficult to like see everything i wanted because like some of the, the areas were quite busy though not on a scale of women folk um and I, I get massive like indecision uh, anxiety, especially when I know I've got a restricted budget. I can only buy a certain amount of things, but even more importantly, I can only knit a certain amount of things. So I need to be careful about what I choose. So, um, and then there's no second chance because I'm not going back. Like I was talking to Knitting Nelly about it before I went and she said she looks around on the first day and then the second day she makes her purchases. I was like, yeah, that sounds like a really good way of doing it. I can't do that. <laughs> so I did walk around a bit, um, absorb what was on offer. There was some super wash brightly coloured stuff, which I could immediately disregard. That made it a bit easier. Um, but I still found it quite hard to decide. So then I was kind of trying to be a bit strategic about prices because some things were up to $35 a skein, which for a gentle quantity, I can't afford. Um, whereas some are more like 22 to 25 so over a jumpers quantity that makes quite a big difference so I sort of bear that in mind a bit and that did impact then what I chose for my sweater to quantity purchase um, and before I went I did make a bit of and I should have brought this with me a list of patterns I had in my queue what weight they were and what meterage they had so that I could make an informed choice about what it was that I was buying rather than just going, oh God, I don't know what to get. And that really helped. Um, so I don't think I bought anything on a whim. I think everything has been bought with a purpose. So that makes me feel quite good. So I'll share those when I get to that section. Um, but so that was like the main part of it for me because I didn't really go with anybody other than my partner. Um, we had a good look at the animals because I just, I bloody love a goat. Like, I just love goats. <laughs> so there were fibre goats, there were uh, llamas, I think, and alpacas. I find llamas and alpacas kind of hard to tell apart. We watched the auction for a bit because we found that really interesting. Um, I had a go on a spinning machine, an e-spinner, for the first time. Because I've been umming and ahhing probably over the last year whether I want to learn to spin. Because I am really drawn to the idea, but I've also only got a certain amount of time to be creative. And there's already too many things I want to make. So I don't really have the time to spin as well. However, Andrew Maori, like the yarn she makes is so beautiful. Um, I want that yarn. <laughs> so I am going to learn. I've decided I do want to learn. Um, I did briefly start looking at buying a drop spindle before I went so that I could buy some fibre at New York Sheep and Wool. And then I decided really quickly after watching a few videos, I don't have the patience to drop spindle spin. I'm just not drawn to it at all. It seems lovely if you're patient. To me, it seems annoying. Um, so I decided if that was my immediate feeling not to pursue that. So I decided I wanted an e-spinner. And I did find that Electric Eels, which is an American company who were going to be at New York State Sheep and Wool, they do have some companies here in the UK that sell their e-spinners. And so the Electric Eel, I'm going to be honest, is a really ugly plastic contraption, but uh, in America is really well priced. Um, now, this is all my opinions before I saw them and I'll explain in a minute. They have one that's $125, which I can buy in England for £140 So on an English website. So that seemed to me like a really good idea. So I was like, I'm going to have that for Christmas, um, but I'm going to wait and see it in person uh, in America because I'm going to be at the festival and maybe I can have a go. And I'm really glad I did because... <laughs> 
Um, I should have looked at the dimensions. It was tiny, it was like this big. And then the one that was the size I wanted to have, which is a bit bigger, I think is quite reasonably priced in America. It's like just under $200, I think, but I might be wrong. Um, but for some reason in England, it's like £370, which I don't understand when the smaller one is basically, I guess, more or less the same price with a bit more added on, I guess, for import charges and postage and stuff. Whereas this one's about £150 more. Um, I can't afford £350 for a spinning wheel. That's just not happening. <laughs> not when I have no idea if I'm actually going to be any good at it or enjoy it. So um, I was a bit disappointed. And I realised that after we left the festival. So I couldn't get one and then try and fit it in my suitcase because they don't sell in shops, they only sell online. Um, and so I missed my opportunity to buy one at New York Sheep and Wall. I really should have looked, when I realised the size difference there and then, I should have looked on the website because it is quite a small thing, the bigger one. I think I could have fit it in the suitcase and brought it back. Um, however, whilst we were there in America, I, I did find on eBay a vintage Russian electric e-spinner um, for £150 and my partner has bought it for me for Christmas. It does say it's in working order if you know how to use it, but it doesn't come with instructions. So um, being that I've had a go and my partner's an engineer and that I think an e-spinner is a fairly simple contraption, like they all do the same thing, I should be able to work it out. Wait till January to find out whether that's true or not. So um, all that say, you know, I had a gun on e spinner. I did spin about this much yarn badly, uh, but I did it. Um, there's no footage of me doing that because at that point my partner was like looking at them, trying to figure out how they work in case he ends up making me one. Um, because my Russian one's still plastic, I would quite like a wooden one. Um, and we've kind of discussed that if I do really get into it one day, he'll make me one um, because he thinks that they're not very complicated things to make. And I did actually see a YouTube video of somebody who I don't think has any more technical skills than I do make one. She did buy a few like components and then sort of put it in a box. Um, my partner's quite skilled. I think he could do a better job and it would be really lovely. Um, but he doesn't want to put the time and energy in until I've worked out whether or not that's something I want to do. So, which is fair enough. Um, so that's exciting. So I... Yeah, so I had a bit of go spinning wheels, I had a bit of a look at fibre, um, and I got to meet a couple of people, um, and I'll, I'll stick some pictures in, I got to meet the lovely um, Becky from Hand It Letter, and lovely Casey from um, Young Folk Knits, um, so that was really lovely, I did get to chat, chat to them for like, you know, like a reasonable amount of time, which was really lovely, and I did also briefly meet um, Morgan from A Knitting Nelly, um, because I had ordered a bag from her and she gave it to me in person. And actually, that's not here, and that was one of my Ryan bag purchases. Maybe I'll go grab it, or maybe I'll send to show you next time. Um, yeah, so that was really lovely. I got to meet her at the end just before we headed off. Um, and it's really surreal meeting somebody that you speak to online, like then meeting them in person. So yeah, but really, really lovely. And um, that was probably one of the nicest parts of the festival. I kind of wish maybe I could have met more people that I chat to because there were quite a few people that I think maybe more I know than they know me. <laughs> um, that went. Um, I saw Andrea Maury at quite close quarters and pointed her out to my partner who went, mm. um, but I didn't go up to her because, you know, like, I would imagine it's quite overwhelming at these events for people like that. And um, I didn't have an Andrew Murray like uh, knit on. I was wearing my Alaska jumper. Um, I got so stressed about what to wear to Ryan back in the end. Like I just wore a jumper and jeans and a hat. So, you know, it was what it was. The weather was forecast to be terrible and that really stressed me out. But yeah, so I'll insert some clips now of the animals. Um, we saw some sheepdog training um an auction and some few other bits of bobs so i'll share some footage from ryan beck here and then afterwards i will show you what i bought <laughs> Thank you. 
not be using for a very long time I wanted to buy myself a fiber souvenir um only one because and I didn't want to spend that much money on it because who knows if I'm actually ever going to get to a point where I can actually do this properly and I saw um, a stand selling lots of um, indie dyed fiber and I saw this one which says it's um 100 gotland combed top by a company called field mouse fiber arts and it's in these lovely like blues and browns now i absolutely love gotland i'm going to say that it actually feels very different to gotland yarn that i have experienced before and it does feel quite like tightly compacted. I don't know if that's normal. Like to me, it does feel a little bit like a bit felted. Is that normal? I don't know. I didn't really realize that till after I bought it. Um, but I do wonder if, you know, you can like just tease it out and pull it apart, but like that might be quite hard work. I don't know. I don't know if you can see me tugging on it it does feel like it could be a bit felted which is maybe an amateur mistake some places feel looser than others um i don't know does that mean i need to brush it out i haven't got a clue so it was 18 dollars um which for four ounces i have no idea what that means because i don't operate in ounces um but so maybe it was a bit of an indulgence i don't know um but yeah, I really liked the colour. I also liked the company it was called Field Mouse. Um, and it says Ryan Beck 2023 on it. So in two years time, when I'm good enough to try and spin something special, maybe I will remember. Um, and it will be a nice souvenir and memory. So yes, um, that is going to go away into my stash for a really long time. Um, and it will wait for me to learn to spin well enough to dig into it. So yeah. I saw lots of gorgeous fibre whilst I was there, but I didn't want to spend like $50 or more on something I didn't know if I was ever going to end up using. So, yes. My, so I've got the yarn I bought whilst I was on holiday in here. There are a couple of things in here that I bought not at Rhinebeck, but I might share anyway in this video. Um, my biggest purchase at Rhinebeck... was a sweater's quantity of a deer in a dac i've no idea if i've said that properly or not um dk by bat and kill fibers carding and spinning mill greenwich new york 
So I've never bought a sweater quantity of DK um, like farm yarn before. I think that's what they call it over there. Um, so it's 100% US source Romney. Well, it says 100% US source Romney and other wool blend. So I'm going to say 100% US sourced wool, uh, mostly Romney. Um, but I really liked the colour. It's like a brown purpley grey. Um, and I thought it would make a really nice single colour uh, jumper. I had originally put on my list I wanted to make, I think it's called the Rider Pullover. And it has a bit of a funnel neck and it's a bit oversized. Um, and I needed like three and a half skeins. Um, but when I actually started looking at the Ravelry notes for the projects, when I got back, it said the fitting was really bad. Um, so I am going to make, is it the Field Jumper by Camellia That, the designer who does the Magnolia series. I'll put a picture here. Um, because it has like these vines and leaves around the neck but is all in one colour and I think that would be really lovely with this. I think that's what I'm going to knit. I did kind of envision a slightly oversized baggy cosy jumper so I'm not 100% sure that's what I'm going to knit. I do really like that pattern. I do think it'd be really nice in this yarn. I don't know whether I could do that and make it slightly oversized. We'd have to see with my meterage like what's the biggest size I could make. So yes, I did get that. I know, it just feels really bouncy and squishy and lovely. I don't know if that means it's woolen spun. It doesn't say. And I'm not good enough to know. So this is 300 yards per four ounces, which again, does not mean anything to me at all. That was really difficult buying yarn in America. We had like this really heated discussion about if fibre was... So they said it was $65 for a, certain, like a pound, maybe. And I said to my partner, so how much does 100 grams cost? <laughs> I still don't know. I was trying to work out if it was expensive or not, because $65 for a pound sounds really expensive. But I don't think you'd ever buy a pound, would you? I don't know. I don't really know what a pound is. Um... Not four ounces, clearly. But it amazes me, actually, that this is four ounces and this is four ounces. I mean, I can get a skein out of this. Who knows? Who knows? So my... Another, so another kind of, um, I guess for me, like a decadent purchase, I did buy one skein of $35 yarn. Um, I fell in love with it and it's by Sawkill Farm and I think we drove through Sawkill to get to Rhinebeck I might have been slightly influenced by the label it's beautiful obviously the colour as well and this is also a DK yarn um, it is 50% Sawkill Farm wool doesn't say what breed and 50% domestic merino 300 yards so same weight and it looks like it's a single ply um, and it's in the colour Harvest Heathered yeah and I really loved their yarns but like I said before I couldn't really justify $35 a skein for a jumper's weight because I'd need three or four um it's too much money for me whereas the Baton Curl I think was $24 a skein might have even been 22 um so much cheaper so i think i'm going to make fiber tails this grow hat now i am aware that the texture pattern in the grow hat is quite similar to that of the field jumper by camellia vad and i did say see fiber tails post something saying that she was quite frustrated upset about patterns being created with very similar not motifs and I do wonder if that's what she was talking about I don't know and I do wonder am I doing something bad by knitting the field jumper when I really like fiber tails and I really like supporting her work but then 
I don't know. I don't know. I think that's why I'm hesitant about knitting the other one, but then I don't know who came out with the design first, whether it is similar or not, whether they're different. I have no idea. I don't really know what I'm trying to say. Um, just I saw that and I, I don't know, it made me have a bit of a funny feeling about it So I'm, because I don't really understand. So I'm not sure, but I will definitely be knit, knitting the grow hat. I think that's what it's called with this one. I'll stick a picture of the one I mean. Um, because I think that'd be beautiful and because it's a single ply I don't think it'd be suited for anything that would get any abrasion like mittens or something so a hat I think is a better idea and then the last thing I bought about at Rydeck yarn wise um this I guess was my only wild card purchase and I couldn't not because the colours are just gorgeous So this is 60% wool, 40% alpaca by Good Karma Farm. It's DK weight. So everything I bought was DK weight, which is really unlike me. Normally I buy all the four ply. Um, but it's uh, 144 grams. 300 yards. I'm very confused. My other skeins of yarn... Oh no, hold on, it's four ply. So I don't understand why it says DK on it. No, it's a four ply. Because that's, but then how is it 300 yards for 144 grams? Shouldn't it be a lot more? Because if the DK is 300 yards. Sorry, you're watching me work this out. No, no, this says it's 144 grams, 300 yards, four ply. This says it's 100 grams. No, this says it's three and a half ounces. Who knows what that is? 300 yards. Don't know. Might need to do some conversion maths. Um, so I think this might be a bit more meterage. I mean, it feels quite heavy. It does feel more than 100 grams. Um, and it's um, the alpaca wool blend. It's very drapey. That'll be the alpaca. And it's in my colours. Um, it's in the colours of the trees that we saw whilst we were there. I enjoyed the trees over in America so much. I really noticed that where we were in like Hudson Valley and North and all that part of America, like the colours were beautiful. I mean, you should see the trees I'm looking at right now out of my window. They look half dead. I. They looked kind of pretty before I left, um, but no, they look draggled now. So I don't know whether we just have slightly different tree species here. It was just stunning over there, like absolutely stunning. I really enjoyed it. Um, so this is like a souvenir um, of that memory. And I might knit this, I might not. Um, my mum might be knitting me a simple cowl out of it because she stole a cowl of mine. Um, she insists that I left it at her house and therefore it is hers. I insist that she nabbed it, um, but I'm not getting it back. So she might knit a simple one as a trade um, with this because she's dying for a knitting project, um, but doesn't want to bite me on. So I might suggest that she knits that up and helps me a bit. Um, the last thing I bought at Rhinebeck is not yarn. It's this. And you can't appreciate this because you can't smell it through the camera. But oh my god, does it smell beautiful and strong. Um, I haven't opened it yet, so I'm not entirely sure what's in here. I think it's dried herbs and bark and stuff like that. Um, and it smells to high heavens. It says, this is our special moth tearing blend of herbs and essential oils with hand planed ar aromatic red cedar. Um, so I... I'm going to make some little pouches to put in my knitting and my drawers because the smell is strong. So um, I have a ton of uh, linen squares and I've been stamping them with this mushroom stamp a friend gave me. Um, and I'm going to make these up into little sachets to stick in all of my project bags and drawers. So I'm very excited for that. Um, Really, the smell gets through my uh, cold, so that's great. 
And I did make two more yarn purchases whilst in America. You know, we were there for like a week and a half after Rhinebeck. So I think that was really good going. Um, but they're both relatively small purchases. So last year I bought um, in Philadelphia uh, one skein of Scout DK um, in this colorway, Juniper Heather. And I was going to make a hat or something with it. It's a sport weight yarn. Um, yeah. And last year I also bought a skein of Deep Bump Spin Cycle um, with the idea of making the Alpen Glow. And I bought another yarn to go with it, but it was a four ply. And I since decided that I didn't want to use that yarn for the Alpen Glow. Um, and I thought this went really well with my Deep Bump, but I needed more of it. So when we were in Canada, we went to um, uh, Units in Toronto um, and I bought two more skeins. So I've now got enough, um, easily enough to do the Alpen Glow. Uh, and I think the dye lots match well enough. So I just bought two more of those and that gave me a sweat, sweat, sweater quantity. So that's quite exciting. Two might have been enough. So I might have only needed to buy one, but I just wasn't really sure. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It might be that I could just knit a jumper with just these three. Um, but then I'm back to square one with what am I going to do for my Alpen Glow. Um, so I probably will use this. So I did get that. And then, um, one small yarn purchase. A long time ago, my mum knit me some socks from Patton's Croy Sock Yarn. She ordered them from Canada, actually. And so I really wanted to get some whilst I was there because it's probably one of the best wearing pairs of socks I've ever had. And so we went to a Michaels, um, but they didn't really have very much. It was pretty much all acrylic, um, but I did see these. And so I got two 50 gram balls. I'm really sad there weren't more colors. Um, there was maybe two more colors, but I, I didn't like them. So I, I just got these two and it's, um, grey brown mull just for making some basic self-striping socks and that was everything I bought so I don't think I'm so bad just see if I can gather it up I mean it is a lot to me this is a lot a lot You know, it's two sweater quantities, a hat, another accessory, and a pair of socks, and then some fibre. So for me, that is a lot, a lot, um, but I'm not going again, So, and I'm probably not going to America for a long time, so I don't feel like it was too overboard. You know, I've got good ideas for what I could do for all of it, so none of it is going to, like, wallow. Um, and I'm quite excited that it's not masses of four ply like I normally buy. I normally fall into that trap of I'll buy four ply because you get more meterage for your money. Um, but those projects always take much longer to knit. <laughs> like you, I would only need two skeins of four ply to knit a good garment for myself, um, just about. Um, but I would need four DK, so it's double the money, um, but more than double the time to knit it. So I'm quite excited that this isn't a ton of really fine gauge projects. I stand a chance of actually making some progress. So I don't know that I'm going to cast any of these on right away because I already have some autumn plans. I do really want to crack on with my soiree. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to cast on next. But I am really tempted to cast on one of these. I might treat myself to a hat project or something first. We'll see. Um, but that's everything I'm going to share today. Um, my next video will probably be a straight up video podcast. So look forward to seeing you then. And uh, let me know if you went to Rhinebeck. Um, and you know what what did you get whilst you were there what was your favorite thing that you saw or got at Ryan Beck yeah all right look forward to hearing you from you and uh thank you have a nice rest of your day